You're listening to Shows That Shaped Me, a podcast by What's On Stage. This week's guest is one of the most prolific British playwrights of the last 10 years. Since the premiere of his critically acclaimed This House at the National Theatre in 2012, James Graham's further successes include Privacy and The Vote at the Donmar Warehouse, and the musical Finding Neverland, a collaboration with Take That's Gary Barlow on Broadway. In 2017, three of his plays were performed in the West End, with a revival of This House joined by Ink and Labour of Love. Next up is yet another West End transfer, with his new play Quiz transferring from Chichester Festival Theatre to the Noel Coward in March. Here is James Graham. I would say the most memorable production of my career so far is probably um, This House, which I opened at the National Theatre in 2002 in the Cottesloe, and uh, really exciting, and we're just about to tour it, which I really uh, can't wait for. It partly was my first play at the National, and I had loads of reverence for but intimidation towards that that building and, and being in that building and walking those those corridors where all those big political history plays had been throughout all my childhood and when I first started writing um, and I think was because we just didn't really know if it was gonna if it was gonna work that it was this really niche play about whips in um, in the 1970s in Parliament and I thought maybe if we were lucky 25 people would maybe want to come and see it and so the, the fact that we um, we sold out the Cottesloe and people seemed to engage with it and politicians came and fed into the show and helped me develop it even further and then moving to the to the Olivier and then to the West End was certainly not something that I'd factored into my thinking when I when I first started writing it but it um it, I suppose it at least gave me the confidence maybe when I didn't have it before that to to tackle those these kinds of politics in in a way that was was more um human and weird and also you know write a play set in a time I wasn't born for and having the confidence to do that um, and just also those creative relationships I built were, were just stunning and working with Jeremy Heron for the first time and I've since worked with him on Labour of Love uh, you know designers like Paulie Constable and Ray Smith these people who just unlocked the play for me and really challenged and pushed me and um, I was so grateful to meet and work with them so this house was yeah kind of I feel like everything after this house is, is, was changed as a result the most memorable production I saw as a theatre goer, I think I'm going to go way back to when I was at school and it was my first ever uh, live Shakespeare play. It might have even been my first ever live piece of theatre that wasn't Panto. And that was Othello at the Royal Shakespeare Company, which is, I know, a really traditional choice, but it, 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 properly, um, it properly unlocked something in me. I think I saw it in about the year 1999. I was t- studying it at A-level. And like everybody, when you're studying it as a, an A-level text, any A-level text, you really loathe and hate because it's all about, you know, passing an exam. But um, but sitting there in that theatre for the first time and seeing the story unfold, it just, it properly shook me. Um, I remember it was, I think it was Richard McCabe played Iago and Ray Fearon was Othello. I think Michael Attenborough directed it. I didn't know any of those names at the time. I just sat and watched the story. And it's that, it's that scene before the interval. Uh, I, th- I don't know if it happens anywhere else in, in Shakespeare. But um, it's basically a 15 minute long real time scene where at the very beginning, um, Othello is in love with his wife and uh, social hierarchical professional structures are all in place. And Iago just starts talking. And by the end of that scene, 15 minutes later, they've decided to kill his wife and they clasp each other's hands and the lights go down. And I remember the lights coming up in the interval and just staying there, just staying there. I couldn't believe the power of that story and for me that's the power of Shakespeare it's never been the language or the poetry it's it's the story it's the narrative and the plot Uh, I loved it I left um, convinced that theatre going was going to absolutely be in my life even if I didn't know at that point I was going to be a writer the production I wish I'd seen is uh, Blue Orange by Joe Pennell it was at the National in the Cottesloe I think oh god sometime in the like 10-15 years ago in the mid-noughties and I came to it as a text, as when I first started trying to be a writer, and I was um, I was lucky enough to be on the Royal Court Young Writers Programme, taught by Simon Stevens, who was just incredibly inspirational and made us read play after play after play after play. And Blue Orange, um, I don't know why it just got under my skin. Uh, I think the construction of the play, um, it's just it's, it's a three-hander, uh, it's set in a London psychiatrist hospital. and. I, something about everyone at the beginning tries to almost be the best version of themselves. They try and help each other and support each other. Um, 
and by the end they're sort of destroying each other and the power structure set in one institution I think was a huge inspiration for things I've tried to write like this house and the play the production I wish I'd seen was the original which um, I think Chiwetel was the uh, the patient and uh, Bill Nye was and, and Andrew Lincoln were in it um, and yeah I just wish I'd seen a live version of it and then it was on again a few years ago at the at the Young Vic with effing Daniel Kaluuya in it and think how can I miss that twice I was in New York when that was on so I've never seen it live and I would love to see it if I get a chance uh, the person I would most like to work with who I haven't yet she's very much alive and it's uh, Indu Ruba Singham at the Triscale Theatre uh, partly because she's just an incredible director um, but it's also because we have this weird connection she's from Mansfield and I'm from Mansfield and I can't stress enough how most people aren't from Mansfield um, in the theatre world uh, and then weirdly she uh, studied at Hall University which is where I went as well and she did drama um, a few years before I got there and we'd, ne and we'd never met until a few years ago and we didn't realise we had this, this connection and uh, recently she was made a doctor at Hall University a couple of years ago and uh, I very weirdly and luckily was made one this year too and I was so furiously nervous about my, my speech that you have to give to the graduates and you see all those amazing inspiring speeches online by people like um, uh, Tim Minchin and stuff and you think I'm never going to be able to do that but I, um, I in do so, so we sort of have worked together she helped me with that and she showed me her speech which was great inspiration but I think um, her plays are, are all really... Um, the plays she, she's attracted to and does so well uh, are you know, socially and politically minded, things like red velvet and handbags, but they have sort of big populist muscles to them. They, they, they try and attract a commercial audience, and I really admire that. So, uh, Indu, if you're listening, please direct one of my plays. I would love that. <laughs>